Email essentially mimics snail mail. The basic metaphor is you write a message and you send it to one or more recipients. And then email systems, and we like to think Gmail does this particularly well, can collate related messages into conversations or threads. Wave, by contrast, starts out with the definition of a conversation, which is simply a lightweight tree structure of messages and a set of users participating in that conversation. And then instead of thinking of individual messages as being sent back and forth, we think of the entire conversation object as being a shared object hosted on a server somewhere. And users that participate can open up that wave, leave their replies, go away, and then when the next user comes, she can open up that same shared object, see those replies, and add her own. That's how the wave grows. That's how the conversation builds up. And you'll recognize that this is a model akin to how bulletin boards work. We found that with a tight enough implementation, you can use that to build a single communication tool that has functionality spanning quite a lot further than what you can do uh, with email today. OK, so we'll start with plain vanilla email type conversations, and we'll show you how it looks in Wave. We're planning a boat trip, and I'm going to start by clicking new Wave here, and then I'll type my title in the first line. Watch your spelling, Lars. There's a lot of people. <laughs> there is a lot of people. They can't see what I'm typing anyway. Are you ready for the boat trip? Hey, Steph. Did you guys like the spell checker? We'll talk more about that later. Since you don't want to watch me type for an hour, we put canned messages in there. I click Done. It asks me for more users. I'll add Stephanie. He's asking me if I want to go shopping uh, before this boat trip, so I'll do something very email-like, which is hit Reply, and say, I love <laughs> shopping. It lives in one place. I can just instruct the server to split the message apart and say, you never wake up early, which is true. Let's take the late bus. You can also do instant messaging type conversations in Wave. In fact, in the same Wave, you can switch back and forth between these different ways of communicating. I'll show you that now. Shiny, you must know a good store. There is a new one over on George Street. Cool. Let's go at 7. Sounds good. Let's invite Jens, too. Okay. So you notice that we didn't wait for me to hit Done before showing Stephanie the message, but rather, and this was difficult to do, we transmit live almost character by character what I'm typing. Why did we do that? It's because with today's instant messaging tools, you spent half of your time looking at it saying, Stephanie is typing, she's typing, she's typing, she's typing, and then you see what she said. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but because, in general, you can start formulating your own reply before Stephanie is done typing hers, by doing this live transmission, you end up spending 100% of your time either reading or writing, which dramatically speeds up the conversation. Now, needless to say, there are times you don't want everyone to see every keystroke, in particular if you spell like I do. Um, and so we have this checkbox here. All you have to do is check it, and now no one can see what you're typing until you hit that Done button. This is one of the features we haven't implemented quite yet. So now that I'm on the wave, um, I'm going to open it. And of course, everything is going to be marked as unread for me. Um, but because I was added late, I didn't get to see Lars's message in one piece. And by the time I'm added, they could be arbitrarily far apart. So we added a feature called playback. So I get to see Lars's original message. Lars asks Stephanie. Stephanie replies. <laughs> Stephanie does inline reply. That's on, and so on and so on. Thank you. So playback turns out to be a really useful feature particularly when a wave starts picking up more structure. And we end up having very nice group conversations in wave, and then occasionally you want to say something in a wave that's not visible to all the participants. We call that a private reply, and I'll add one down here at the bottom, and I'll say, let's buy Steph a really nice present. I wrote this part. And then I will add just Jens, and you will see if I just quickly flip over to Jens's browser, and scroll down, he sees that private reply, but if you look at Stephanie's screen, she doesn't see it. 
sample application. It's a little blogging site we've built. It's over on Google App Engine, but you could build it anywhere you host your website. And this blogging site, in addition to embedding waves on its pages, it provides me with this robotic participant that we affectionately call Bloggy. All I have to do is add Bloggy to the wave. And now you'll see, I, you can probably not read that, but on that yellow banner, all users on the wave is now warned that Bloggy, this new participant, has published the blog on a page which we build over an app engine. Can I just introduce Gregory D'Alessander? So in the blog, one of the cool things you'll see, you can see is that we're not just embedding the images, we're actually embedding the whole wave with all of its UI. This means that I can respond, hey, that looks fun. Why wasn't I invited? <laughs> the same way we embed, and we, we do, you can respond in the same way you do in the wave client. Exactly. And so now I can see, obviously, uh, Greg's question from inside my wave client. I can answer it from in here. I don't have to go to the blog site to do that. I could if I wanted to, but I can say here, um, I lost the phone with your number. I really, truly can't <laughs> spell. Here we go. So one of the things you just saw is that I happened to be online when Lars was online, and I saw his response coming in live on his blog. That's not always going to be the case. Since I responded to this blog, it'll show up in my Wave client right after I refresh my Wave client. Um, it will show up in my Wave client, and I can continue the conversation in there. But Lars, I live next door. <laughs> and, um, and then we can, that response shows up on the blog. We can continue the conversation from there, and anyone else can join in that conversation. And so we think this combination of collaborative editing and inline discussion makes for a very powerful collaboration tool. And I want to show you that with a design document that the team wrote a while See back. See here that it's a rich text document. It's got headlines. It's got bullet points. It's got illustrations, different types of fonts. And then it's interrupted by these little snippets of conversation that help facilitate the collaboration. And as always, the best way to see how this happened is to play back the wave. And you'll see Stephen, our trusted server guy, started out with a terse draft. He added the rest of the team. Lars, is the manager, says, please do more work. Stephen grudgingly adds another paragraph. He says, yeah, whatever. Then Stephanie, the PM, makes an edit here. She adds a comment there, starts a discussion there, and so on. I can use this slider here to drag to anywhere in the history of the wave. And we're planning a, a bunch of power tools that come with playback. For example, I might ask it only to play back Stephanie's contributions. I might ask it to only play back a single message or even a single paragraph inside a message. We're definitely going to let you take one change in the history and revert it at the end of the history. Maybe name a version so that you can find it again and so on. Playback is going to be a really powerful tool for investigating and manipulating the entire history of a wave. But the thing we had the most fun working on, as in this was the hardest thing we did, um, which is to let more than one person edit the same message at the same time and still transmitting the characters live on the wire. So we have a set of pictures here, and Stephanie is going to start at the top left editing the captions. You can see on my screen, I can see exactly with that orange label where she is, and I'm going to start from the lower right. Thumbs Spelling, up. Spelling, Google. Lars in the lead. Smiley. David. Hiking. Good pal. Thank you. I'm gonna now we're very close to each other. I'll add some styling here. I'll make this yeah. italic. Oh I'll boy, if someone could add some underline. color, we can do this. Notice how close we can edit to each other. You can see we've got a couple yeah. of, of our team has joined us. We've got three people here, Casey, Steph, Ophir, and Dan. We have four people now editing the same document right next to each other. Thank you. Thank you. And so apart from hours and hours of fun just chasing each other's carrots around on the screen. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. Um, the, the, this sort of live concurrent editing opens up a whole set of new ways of using the tool. We're actually still discovering some. Imagine you're in the same room, you're taking notes from a meeting. Oftentimes people don't even come to the meeting, they just open up the wave 
see the notes being taken, they just pop their questions in the wave and so 